U.S. postal worker is being credited with possibly saving a man's life after noticing his mail was untouched for days. News 13's Samir Nefsi has the story. Joshua Smith has worked here in the Hendersonville area for the past six years, delivering everything from bills to packages and over that time really getting to know and care for the people who rely on him. But on Wednesday, he added something completely new to his job description, saving another man's life. As a mail carrier, I feel like that our relationship is, is strong with the people in the community and they rely on me for things and obviously me being here was the difference in him living and dying possibly. It's a common sight to see Smith donning his satchel and going door to door on North Whittett Street, often forming relationships and stopping by to chat with residents along the way. It's kind of a weird bond because you're not family and you're, they're almost, they're sort of strangers, but it's a very friendly, very friendly bond. After noticing a growing pile of untouched mail and a vehicle that hadn't been driven, he knew something was wrong. Some people that's normal, but for Mr. Jones, it's a little abnormal because I see him almost once a week. After an unanswered door knock, Smith called the Hendersonville Police Department, a decision that may have saved the man's life. We found the elderly male laying on the floor. It appeared as though he'd been laying there a while um, and he needed medical attention. Police aren't releasing the man's identity until they can talk with his family, but we have learned he's in his 80s and was taken to Pardee Hospital. The news shocking the tight-knit community. He was a real positive influence in our community. While the community waits for an update on his condition, his mailman is looking forward to seeing him again. Well, as soon as I see him, I might give him a hug, man. Smith says he's spoken to the man's son, who says his dad remains in the ICU. And as we move into these winter months, Sergeant Cap says it's important to check on your elderly neighbors, especially if you've noticed a decrease in activity. Child was found here on this property behind me that's shaded with a lot of foliage. And when law enforcement found the child, a padlock was on the cage. I've been in law enforcement for 36 years. This is the first time. I've seen something quite this significant. Sheriff Richie Simmons says it all started with an anonymous call. Deputies then found a nine-year-old boy sleeping outside in a cage overnight in freezing temperatures. After breaking the padlock, the nine-year-old was taken to EMS on scene at around eight in the morning. Uh, we were able to reach the accommodation lock and, and the fence, retrieve this child, uh, the temperature at the time, was about 28 degrees. Uh, we found out that this child had been out there all night. Shortly after, the sheriff broke into the residence and found two other children that were given to the social services of Davidson County. This is why you do law enforcement. This is why anybody gets a law enforcement. The child's father and stepmother, Jonathan and Sarah Starr, were arrested and charged with felony child abuse, misdemeanor child abuse, and false imprisonment. The boy's aunt, Shelly Barnes, was also taken into custody. All three are in jail, the stars under a $100,000 bail, while Barnes is under $60,000 bail. The nation's report card shows 2022 test results for fourth and eighth graders across the country. Not one state saw an improvement in its average test scores compared to 2019 numbers. For math, fourth graders had a five point drop and eighth graders had an eight point drop. Now, both grades had a three-point drop in reading scores, and those lower scores are also reported in the mountains and across North Carolina. News 13's Charles Perez has a look at the impact and local systems. One. It came out today. This report, it's called the National Assessment of Educational Progress. It's kind of like a report card for the nation's schools. Some folks have called it distressing, not only about the nation's schools, but about specific categories right here in North Carolina. The numbers are out, and the results for North Carolina students is not good news. The whole nation is lower, including North Carolina. A lot of the schools were shut down, mm -hmm. and even schools that were open, uh, not every student went in person. Nationwide, students fell behind during the two years most compromised by COVID. But according to a nationwide report that came out today, in some areas, students in North Carolina took a harder hit. The report looks at students in fourth and eighth grades. In math, North Carolina fourth graders dropped five points, more than the national average, and eighth graders were down 10 points, three points more than the national average. In reading, 
39% of fourth graders scored below basic achievement levels, while 34% of eighth graders also missed the mark. Dr. Bill Nolte heads Haywood Public Schools. He says Haywood schools fared much better than other districts because of time in the classroom. We did really well because we opened five days a week at the end of September after we sh were shut down the, the previous spring and about 80% of our students came and we continued to teach. Asheville City Schools issued a statement today saying, we realize that COVID has impacted students' test scores in many ways. However, we will continue to work diligently to address our students' academic needs. Though the study cites significant declines nationally, the North Carolina Department of Public Instruction has said the declines here, particularly in math, would need more than a year of additional learning to catch up. The ones uh, that did not come in person, some of those students have not been back, and that, that's, that's true across the country. We have done lots of things to help students close the gap. I do worry about those students.